Fuck, how big is your ute, man? 2.2 meters long. What have you got? Oh, nice, bro. Raised with a snorkel and mud pies? Yeah, <laughs> we joke about that in New Zealand, bro. We're like, when, when guys go out on their own and make their first 50 grand, they'll yeah. buy a big fucking truck. I'm like, yeah, well, why not, bro? <laughs> hey, guys, just doing a little sit down talk with Stephen from Standout Projects. He started in the civil space. Um, he's in the high end resi in Melbourne. He was saying his last project, he was sort of sitting around $8,000 a square meter for high end renovations. Stay tuned for this one. Should be a good one. Thank you. When I first started doing these, it was uh, it was quite nerve wracking. Yeah. But then, once you just have in your brain, like literally, if you can imagine that there's no camera, you're just yeah. it's just like meeting a client or meeting a subby or yeah. meeting I'm a subby to you. Like yeah. I potentially will price for you in the next two years. So it's like that's all so we're doing. Give me a bit of background. What do you guys do? Yeah, man. So we're like so I've got a building company in Auckland. So yeah. very heavily involved in like the sales, the negotiation, and the pricing estimating phase. So. Yeah. We've got a team at eight and I strictly focus on all the, um, well I don't do now, but I strictly focus on when a lead comes in, how mm. fast and efficient we are to getting a pr price proposal out. Yeah. So we've got someone on the phone obviously managing new leads, new inquiries. Our main thing, and you can jump in whenever, whenever we get an inquiry, our market's a little bit different. We don't go for the bigger higher end stuff. We're okay. purely sort of focused more on maintenance, bathrooms, that like under 250K is kind of like our lane, yeah. but the margins are higher. That's yeah. what I realized. What, like 30%? 40%, smaller yeah, wow. job. The closer, you, the further you go down, the better the margins are. Like yeah, wow. we can tune out 10K jobs and make, you know, four grand in two to three days. Wow. It's good money. Yeah. So. When I first started doing the building business, I just dialed into like that's where I want to sit. Yeah, I'm I'm not a smart dude. I just want to do the least <laughs> amount of work, make the most amount of money. Shit, that's everyone's objective. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. all good. I'm I've got nothing against guys wanting to do the architectural builds, jump on the commercial stuff, and be there for two years. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to find new work. You don't have to find a new client. Yeah. You sign a contract, you hit deadlines, and you get paid every month. That's right. That's the fuck. That's pretty cool as well. Yeah, it is. But I'm like, if I can go and do a job, and this is when I was on the tools. Yeah. If I can go and do a job, pump it out by twelve o'clock, and make a thousand bucks, fuck, I'm going. Why not? Yeah. So how many leads do you reckon you get a week? Well, I'll tag my fucking lead guy, man. He is a beast. He was generating 120 a month. Everything from small rotten framing weatherboard jobs, which sounds shit, but when you can go and do those and replace, you know, thirty or forty lineal meters, at, and, and you're charging three to six thousand dollars, and your a builder's doing it in two days, yeah, you're making good money, man. Yeah, that's you know good what money. I mean. So, so you got someone that's doing your what? Just like all your leads. I yeah, he's based in Thailand. He's a beast, but he lived in Auckland. Was with me for like four years. Yeah. Um, in Auckland, he's been in Thailand for two years now. But he's a freak, and he does all the stuff for Rapid QS as well. So, wow. Yeah. So just SEO or what is it? SEO, Facebook ads, Google ads. We run like a lot of personal, like one-on-one -on -one video stuff, like yeah. direct shout out. Like we're trying to speak direct to our like main client you know yeah. like i want to speak we want to speak to like the mum and dad sitting at home on the couch on a tuesday night scrolling fuck we really need to get the deck replaced all the rotten the boards are fucking rotting we need to sell the place yes. and then they come across our video hey if you need to get this stuff done if you've got we're x y and z yeah. we're the guy what are you doing over here what kind of work are you doing high and res high and res yeah it's a complete opposite lane from so me completely opposite <laughs> yeah tell me about it what did you start off in um so yeah so i've always been in that high end res market even when you were doing your apprenticeship in that? Well, I, I, I did the uni, so I came from okay. a completely different end. Yeah, cool. Tell me, start from scratch, man. Yeah, when, so finished school, didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. Went and did a management nice. diploma. Yeah. Construction and, management? No, just no? management. No business, shit. Business management. <laughs> in here in Melbourne? Yeah, Melbourne. Yeah. And then sort of took a grasp to building yeah went and did the diploma in building okay. building management yeah and that led me to do the degree so then i went into the construction management degree nice at rmit how old were you when you finished all your management and degree training Ooh. just so i can get some timelines yeah so finished school in 2004 business management was just a one-year okay diploma so 2005 yep. yeah did tafe 2007 mm. Didn't finish till 2010. How old were you at that stage? 
mid twenties, late twenties. Yeah, late. late okay, 20s, cool. Yeah. Just it's it's more just to give a timeline perspective on. I look at what people comment to us. Yes. And it's I'm trying to be relatable as I can to guys who have done their time, qualified, touching base on about to go out on their own. So I yeah. love trying to put things in perspective. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So then I actually went and did a, a a grad program with Abbey Group. Okay, cool. Which was a big. Um, they were doing freeways and schools at the time. Yeah, so more civil. Yeah, so civil I went to the pirate. civil side just to do a grad program to see yeah. what they were like. And then worked on schools projects because the government put a lot yep. of money into stimulus. Yeah, to packages the economy, for that. Packages, so they did like these public-private sector sort yeah. of schools. And what was your role there? Like, what were you doing? <laughs> Defects. <laughs> oh, real. Probably the worst part. Yeah. <laughs> Telling people they've fucked up and they've got no, to No, I had to it. go into each classroom, make sure that the number of PowerPoints were oh, in okay. the room. Quantity checking. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. The whiteboard was all set up ready in <laughs> the right spot. Fuck. PowerPoints and data points were all mm. correctly. Okay. Um, and then... If anything was missing, I had to follow up with that trade. Okay, cool. So yeah. that lasted about eight months, and then I got shipped to the freeway. So shipped. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Mornington Peninsula yep. was doing the, the main freeway there, the new nice. Peninsula Link. Yeah. So I was building bridges. So we went from Fuck me, domestic, resi, yeah. to um, building bridges, and it was just incredible. Like, yeah. Eye-opener? Oh, mate, absolutely. Did you like, learn a lot? Oh, heaps. Yeah, that's and good, man. you come into this culture where people follow the jobs. So mm. most of the guys that were working on the projects were from all over Australia. Yeah. So they would come from all different parts of Australia and follow the job. And then once that job's finished, they move to the next one, yeah, yeah, wherever yeah. it may take them. So most of those people are probably now in Queensland working yeah, yeah. on the... Whatever on the roads there. Yeah. Okay, so you finished, when, how long were you doing those projects for? I was there for four years. Four years. So you, yeah. how did you transfer from civil and bridges to high end resi? That's a huge. Yeah, that's a huge. Yeah, so. Big gap there. While I was doing my degree, I was laboring to a small resi company. Yeah. And then once I knew that the bridges was wrapping up, I like yeah. reached out to him again and said, I'm basically yeah. finished my grad program. I'm sweet. Want to go back into res? Worked for him for about eight months, and then like, nah, this is not working out. He was constantly <laughs> micromanaging me. He didn't want to let me off the leash. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah. So I said, all right, see you later. And then my mate got me a, a job in a very very high end boutique. Yeah. Um, firm. They yep. do just new builds. So they specialize yeah. in new builds. Okay, cool. And if it's not new builds, it'll be extensive renovations so yeah. their jobs ranged from anywhere between five mil to 20 mil yeah okay cool so that's, the yeah, that's a huge that area yeah yeah, yeah yeah okay so what was your role there so i started off as a contract administrator yeah just letting out um trades yeah getting stuff quoted so you're putting out a putting together a tender package sending it out no it. so basically they had an estimating team that did okay. that oh sweet and then i was engaged once the job became live and we had to get subbies on board yeah. to get them to do the job, okay, cool. I was reviewing their quotes, making sure that their quotes met the scope, uh, yeah, and then okay. I would give out a, a, a contract, yeah, subcontract sweet. agreement. Okay, cool. So I did that for about eight months, and then one of the jobs was really behind, so they decided to put me on there to try speed get it, it speed it up. Nice. So I was on that for about a year, huge job over in um, Turak. Yep. $14 million job oh. and um, I was money, successful yeah. on that and then they gave me my own job to run as a nice. PM. So proved nice. myself, did the yeah. project management, was there for just under five years. Yeah. Did you have a budget and everything to hit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How did you find How did you find that time and budget? That's, well, time, budget and quality. They yeah, say there's a triangle, you can only pick two. Yeah, so. <laughs> you had to hit So fortunately, three. Quality wasn't on me, so time mm. and budget was on me. So the each job had a supervisor. Yeah. And they were focused on quality. quality. Yeah. And then we had to hit time and budget. Okay. What was you, what was the job value of this one and what was the time rough? So it was about fifteen mil, thirteen to fifteen mil, and we had two years to do it in. Yeah. Full concrete structure. 
or yeah. form concrete walls like yeah there's a lot of time in a lot stuff. of time yeah and this was a brand new build brand new build yeah yes. what was the client like did you meet the client yeah met the clients very down to earth considering the amount of money that they I have i was gonna say philanthropists like yeah really really Aussie based um, Australian, yeah, Australian, yeah, 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 crazy. Aussies, yeah. Was it their first house they had built? Jeez, that's a good question. No, nah, I just find it's because it's yeah. always interesting when when you deal with probably a client. not. Yeah, they. Must I don't have, think it, it would have been. Yeah, like they probably helped their their kids as well, like yeah. an older older couple. Yeah. Um, Did you build a good relationship with the client throughout? No, so we didn't have much dealings with them to be honest. It okay. was more architect yeah yeah interior designer okay, sort cool. of communication yeah at that level the client's yeah. probably pretty far back to yeah me, and then after that i worked on um a winery over in point leo estate nice so what was that worth probably high 20s were you a, like the lead pm on that no one? so i was like just once again brought in yeah to settle the ship because it was just too many moving parts. Oh man. Yeah. So they had a senior PM, junior PM, and then I sort of on the same level as the junior PM. Okay, cool. Managing the, the job, helping out, procuring things. Nice. Um, just there was so many moving parts because you got to imagine that they had a delivery dock. Yeah. They had the kitchen, commercial, full commercial kitchen, um, yeah. like eating areas. Like yeah, it'd be just, a lot of different stages. Yeah, there. heaps of different moving parts that we had to hit. Mm, I was involved in one project in Queenstown. It was Five Mile, and it was um, we were in charge of building all the panels for four yeah. different blocks. That was crazy. It was like basement, and then first floor came out, and then we had to do like the retail block, like food court eating block, which was yeah. like four hundred and fifty squares. And then we moved on to shopping centre retail block, but that went on for eighteen months, and. That was my first taste of commercial and I absolutely hated it. Oh, I hate it. Like, hate like it. there's no yeah. such thing as like sleep or weekends. <laughs> They're just like, this has to be done by this day. Yeah. The biggest thing was back of house had to be done by February, oh, Jan 2nd. And they, yeah, they did some extremely semi-illegal shit to get yeah. stuff done. And yeah, it was absolutely horrible. I hated it. That's when I went back to Rizzi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually did a semi-commercial project while I was finishing up at... Yeah, this high end builder, and that's sort of once I got my license. So I only okay. got my license mm. um, in in twenty eighteen. Yeah, okay. Or twenty sorry twenty fifteen. That's all right. So you've been about eight years. Now yeah, 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 yeah. So license, and then my father in law bought this shop front and said I want to develop it. Yeah. So it threw me straight into the deep end. Nice. Had to learn like disabled standards, yeah. making sure that we had the right turning circle full of wheelchair the front door was the right size yeah almost a architect drafty. Yeah, yeah 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 so it was done by a drafty the, okay. the drawings yeah and then basically i had to fill in all the missing blanks jesus yeah so so how have you got where how did you start standout projects and what was your first project yeah so standout projects some um, started five years ago um nice. and sort of me and my business partner at the time mm. He had a carpentry background. I had the, yep. the management side of things. Perfect match up. Yeah, perfect match. Um, and basically, we actually got gifted the, the, the first job. Like, <laughs> yeah. I reached out to an architect and she said, oh, I actually have these clients. They're looking at doing a reno. Get in touch. So I rang them up. We quoted the job. Nice. Just fell into place. Easy. And you probably thought this is too good to be yeah, true. Yeah, I thought, geez, man, if it's that easy, then... Everyone should be doing it. Yeah, exactly. So, and then, so it was um, a kitchen reno, um, cool. re-sanding the whole floor, yeah. bathroom reno, nice. opening up a few walls. Job value on this one? Um, just over 100K. Just so started small. That would have been very minor, obviously, compared to what yeah. you've been exposed to. Yeah, so the hardest thing for me, I suppose, was going from all the way high end, getting mm. those finishes and all these different materials yep. that were so high end and, and, bespoke. Not, yeah. and bespoke, and then going to, I wouldn't say like a, the all the way at the lower end, but yeah. it's like that huge... Bit of an ego check somewhat? No, not no, really. Not... It was more so like, how do I build this maintaining budget when I'm only used to doing... Okay, yeah. And using these trades, using those materials. How do I go all the way from 
there to to there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that was a a steep learning curve for me to make sure that we get the right trades, get the right materials. Yeah. Um, Because it's always easy to spend someone else's money. Yeah, absolutely. And now this is my own money. Yeah. So you've got to be conscious about where you go buy Mm. your material. Yeah. Who do you set up? Um, trade accounts, trade with, accounts with, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And then we sort of got busy, hired our first apprentice. Then we have to now keep him busy. So now we've got an extra mouth to feed. Find more work. Yeah. yeah. And then so, but fortunately, like we rolled on and then COVID hit. Oh, God. You would have um, just picked up some momentum. Yeah, then... picked up momentum. And, and then COVID, the system broke. Yeah. So things became very difficult in terms of a task that ordinarily take an hour became three hours. Mm. Um, Subbies on site refused to get vaccinated, so they couldn't come back to site. So we had to re yeah. re-elect the contract. Yeah. Um, so finding it. So finding the time yeah. to be able to peg that back. So how big was the company at this stage of just yourself, business, business partner, partner and one apprentice? Yeah, and then no, I probably probably grew exponentially. Okay. Um, before COVID or after? Before. Before, okay. Yeah. So before, how many staff were you at before, before COVID? Probably about 12. Shit, it's pretty big So tank. grew grew very quick in two years. Yeah. How, uh, yeah. So I was, I was doing eight jobs at any at, one time. Yeah, nuts. Um, and how did, how did you get your next job after that architect? Because I'm always, people are always fascinated by getting jobs, filling up a pipeline. That's yeah. the hardest bit, you know? Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Like, you always have in the back of your mind when you like work is, is always just work. How am I going to chase that yep. that next job? Yeah. Basically, you got to put yourself out there. All the it's time. like yeah, reaching out to architects that you haven't reached out to before. Yeah. Um, I found sending them an email was the best because I would try call and speak to someone. Too busy. But always too busy. Wasn't the right time. Yeah. Like they didn't want to know you. No. Nah. Whereas when you send an email, you've got to keep it short and sharp. Yeah. Not asking for a job. Yeah. But planting the seed to say, hey, yeah. stand our projects, we we'll do high end res. Yeah. Um, be more than happy to collaborate on a, yeah. on your next project. Nice. Um, and then we started started doing Instagram posts like yeah. we'll provide you with a cost estimate for free. Cool, man. And then that just picked up momentum. Yeah. You gotta do what you can, eh? Yeah. Like, I'm not a big believer in quoting for free and doing all that. Yeah. I did do it when I first started yeah. and you've done it. You, yeah. you do have to do it. But well, we um, still do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can spend six weeks doing an attender yeah. and it could be just a price check. Yeah, yeah. Because they do have you... a preferred builder, but yeah. I, have, I don't know. Yeah. Do you, is that something that you work on in the business with like how do we pre-qualify more of our leads or how do we know who's a... So that's always been a discussion. How do yeah. we pre-qualify? Do we stay away from just the, the drafty and go down just the architecture route? Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. there's a big difference. Because generally speaking, this is generally generalized, but if a drafty is engaged, their budget is on the lower end. Yeah. But if they go with an architect, they've been informed of what the, the, the price of the cost of the build will be. Yeah, projected cost. They, yeah, they've got like an they idea. have an idea. Yeah. So when they get their quote, they're not shocked. Yeah, yeah, They yeah. know that we're a builder, we charge prelims. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Whereas a mum and dad that goes to a drafty that wants to do an add-on, like they just want to get a carpenter builder. Yeah, 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 and they don't need I it. I can't compete with that. No, you can't. Um, so yeah, so it was, was that we had to learn very quickly which jobs we were tendering for we're tendering or on. spending your effort and time yeah exactly at yeah. the end of the day company costs yeah like chase. i was i had a i have a full-time estimator yeah i've got to pay his bills yeah for sure and if you're not going to win the jobs then what are how you are you going to feed feed the, yeah. the army so how big is the company now what kind of jobs have you got on and kind of yeah where are you at with stuff so yeah we got i got myself so i bought yeah. out my business partner okay um, Did he just want to move on? Was it a change? Yeah, I sort of. I sort of feel that we were going in different directions. I wanted to do the big jobs, yeah, and and focus on the very high end. Whereas he was very good at the smaller jobs, 
hands on. Nice. So we were going different directories and we basically. Said, Has it ended all good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. I mean, that's yeah, the best, so, that's the dream result. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could have been hmm. better, but yeah. won't go into that. That's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but in saying that, like we left amicably. Nice. He's doing what he needs to do. I'm now focused on what I need to do. So at the moment, we've got cool. two guys in the office, yep. um, a, a PM and a junior PM. Yeah. I've got two guys over in the Philippines that are helping us out. One nice. doing, entering all the invoices. Yeah, data entry. Data entry, doing all the occupational health and safety. Good. Um, and then I got, I actually took estimating offshore. Yeah. So I hired an estimator over in the Philippines. Nice. And he does all my estimating, all the back end stuff, sending out all the, yeah. the 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 packages to get quoted, and then I'll sit with him yeah. a couple of days out before the tender's due and, and run through the tender. Cool. So he's doing all your chasing up. Yeah, as he's well. doing all the legwork. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a huge amount of work. Eh? Yeah. I mean, especially for jobs in your lane, there's a lot of um, there's so much stuff in getting prices back. Getting, do you get two or three prices? Yeah, so try we, we, we try to get two or three yeah. prices per trade. Yeah. But the structure elements, we struggle getting your two to three. Yeah. So that's like your concrete is your yeah. structural steel. Yeah. they very hard to come by. and just. Yeah. Is there just a lack of them doing it or the guys that are doing it have got ridiculous timelines? Oh, I, I can't answer that. Like, I okay. just, I, I don't. They just, you I don't can't know. get like, prices back. <laughs> yeah, you can't get, like, you, you, like the bigger mobs, yes, you can get prices yep. back, but obviously their prices are a lot more expensive. Whereas For sure. when you go to a one-man show, I suppose all their focus is, is getting the jobs done on site. And yeah. then when they get home, they're tired to do the quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you got to stay competitive. Yeah, so I absolutely. can't go to a big concreting firm to do nah. a slab. Like yeah. it's just- You won't make money. Yeah, won't It's make like money. the mum and dad coming to you for you and you're charging Correct. all these prelims. It's like the same Yeah, thing. exactly <laughs> right, exactly right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and then finding a good concreter. Yeah. Like, cause all the old concreters are, are retired now. Yeah, yeah. So you're relying on that new generation to come in and- No one wants to do this stuff. No, they just want to, do the job, get out, and they're yep. not too concerned about quality because it's the next person's problem. Yeah, yeah. So that's horrible, man. Do yeah. you reckon that's a bit of a trend in Melbourne? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, like, yeah. it's the next trade's responsibility. Like, if the frame isn't that perfectly plumb and yeah. straight, yeah. Oh, the plaster will just pack it out. But yeah. the plaster's not going to pack it out. He's going to stick his sheet on and, and move yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No so one then, cares, eh? and then the move. Then the tiler comes to me and goes, "Oh, I need to build up." 10 mil of glue here, I'm gonna to have to charge you more. Yeah. So it's a revolving door. The next trade just yeah. cops it. How do you try and mitigate that risk? That's... Yeah, so we put in um, quality checks yeah. on each phase of, of the build. Yeah. So once the concreter comes, we'll actually put a straight edge on the on yeah. the slab. Make sure we're make sure that he's all good and if there's any flat spots yeah. or humps or bumps, we'll get in before we pay him the last sum, we'll say, hey, you need to come in and, and yeah. self-level or you yeah. need to come grind this high spot. Yeah. So that's one check for the slab. Who physically does that from your company? My supervisor. Yeah, okay, cool. So he's got a pretty like strict checklist of what we're checking at what yeah, stage? Yeah, so office space, we try to do all these checklists that okay, we cool. that we facilitate to the yeah. to the supervisor. Yeah. But don't get don't get me wrong. Like he's only one man running maybe two to three jobs at any one time. And I was going to say he's man. going to miss stuff. Yeah. So we try put all that um, quality checks in place so that mm. it doesn't happen. But it doesn't happen. We're but all human it, man. It, yeah, we're all human. Some stuff slips through the to the key pass. Yeah. And um, we're getting better. Yeah. Like that's that's what we strive to. That, I mean, towards. that's just the that's probably the hardest thing about high end res. Yeah, you've got to be high end. Yeah, and the tolerances are a lot minimal. Yeah, a lot less. Yeah, than and standard. throwing the standards and tolerances book to a yeah. architect ain't gonna fly. Nah. So nah, absolutely. All the quirks, all the the gaps, everything mm. has to be minimal. Yeah. Painting, you can't see brush marks. Everything yeah, needs man. to be. So how many projects are you running at a time right now? So we do. 
So I, I tried to do the t um, six to eight mark. Six to eight. Um, depending on the value of the job. So obviously yeah. the the higher the value, obviously. Yeah. Um, the more resources it requires. For sure. So then we'll we'll drop it down. Yeah. I try not to do jobs that's starting at the same time. Okay. So for example, if a job is doing demo, I'll try stagger it mm. to make sure that we yeah, man. we we don't get too labor intensive on one job and then another one suffers. Yeah. So uh, ha back to your structure and then just job flow. Yeah. You've got ha roughly just quick, how many in the office? Just like so, so two understand. in the office and myself. Okay. And so then I'm like the head. On show. Yeah. Head <laughs> in the office. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like doing helicopter manager. Like yep. I sort of let the guys run their own show. But you've got to cut hats a half on for most. most yeah. Items. So I yeah. know I try to two to three site visits okay. a, a week of yep. each job just to make sure that everything's good. running smoothly. Um, and then if a problem does arise and yep. the architect calls me because yep. somehow they still bypass the project manager and want to come talk to me direct. I'm like... If they think, if, if it's serious enough yeah, for them, yeah, they're going to be serious, like... Nah, exactly right. To to yeah, them. so I've got to be across the jobs. Yeah, for sure. And know who's on what job at any one time, and which subbies are on jobs. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so there's... As I said, there's a pro senior project manager, junior project manager, myself. Yep. So we're yep. we're managing the office. How do you manage your carpentry side? Is it all contracted out? No. So all carpentry is done in-house. Nice. So, so I have 12 chippies. Shit, that's a big operation. Yeah, man. so big operation. And just making sure that every job has the right amount of resources yeah, man. and labor. Managing labor and then labor allowances from the estimator on each yeah. job. For, yeah. that, how do you... How do you keep in check, say, for example, one townhouse, you've got 450 hours to stand frames. How mm. are you checking labor hours versus time allowed? Yeah, so... Back costing, essentially. Yeah, so we have um, a project management software called Procore. Okay, cool. And in Procore, we're able to, every week, the labor timesheets get yep. done. Yep. It gets inputted into Procore. So I cool. can actually see at any one time, yep. every week, yep. how the, it's more dollar figures. Yeah, I know. Matching up, not hours. so much hours. Yeah, for sure. Because in high-end res, you can't go on hours. Like, it's nah. just, what you think would be to <laughs> stand up a frame, Yeah, doesn't always equate because yeah. curved walls. Oh, man. Um, Palmets that all curve. Like, yeah. Uh, what, what are your stand like? I'm when I think high end res, I think mm. 140 frames throughout everywhere. Are you pretty much standard? No, so Melbourne, we still managed to get away with 90. Yeah. Uh, 90 mil frames. Okay, for single story and double. A double single double. and double. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. 90 yeah, yeah. mil. Yeah. Um, we're going to 140s where they want to get a fatter insulation bat. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's not so much structure. Yeah. Spec and on insulation. It's more spec and getting achieving the the six star. Okay, how do you run your? Um, I'm just strictly trying to think of. Uh, I want to go more questions related to the following. Yeah, sure. Uh, your like carpentry guys. How do you run your carpentry team? Like, yeah, so, what's the structure there? So I've sort of divided it up with supervisors. Yep, sweet. So I've got three supervisors. Yep. Each supervisor has their own team. Okay, cool. So that team will follow to each project. Nice. And then I have a couple of apprentices that are floaters. Yeah. So, for example, the job in Turak, if they need more labor extra to hands, yeah. the extra hands, I'll send the apprentices there. Cut nogs, put an in insulation. Exactly cleaner, right. So, each, each supervisor has a leading hand. Yeah. That leading hand should be able to r know the answers to the questions. Yeah. Should that supervisor not be there? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So you have a supervisor, leading hand, and then yeah. under that leading hand, you have your yeah your your apprentices. Okay, cool. Are your uh, clients that you're building for are they ever going on site? Oh, absolutely. So we encourage fortnightly um, site visits. Site visits. And you'll rock around with them. Yeah, we a supervisor, not me per se. I'll Supervi drop into yeah, any, yeah yeah. So every time there's a site meeting, supervisor will be involved in the same with the project manager. Yeah. So they run in tandem. Nice. And then either the architect will take site minutes or we'll take site minutes uh, for them and distribute it. Okay, cool. So when you're hiring like a site man like a site supervisor, is that what you call them? Site yeah, supervisor yeah. or yeah. a project manager? Yeah. You must have to look at, yep, you've got to have the skills. Yeah. You've got to have the knowledge, but you've also got to have a bit of client facing side 
good yeah. good chat, good attitude. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a hard person is key. That's a hard person to find. Oh. Do you think? Correct me Look, if I'm wrong. I'm no, just... no, no, there's a lot of crap out there. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, people say they can do something, but they actually can't. Yeah. And when you throw them into the deep end, then you quickly find out either they sink or swim and they yeah, know what yeah. they're talking about. <laughs> but yeah, getting that, getting that person that has both levels of understanding the technical side of things yep. as well as understanding how to communicate with a client is, is difficult yeah man um but you can teach technical but you can't so much teach communication yeah so personality likability yeah, exactly right so yeah. i suppose when i hire i'm looking for the person that i can have a good one-on-one chat on, with yeah. and yeah. engage yeah and get a good feel of their personality for sure and then past experience is very important. Like yeah. how long did they hold a job for? Like if someone held a job for six months, I'd be like mm, something, a bit, something yeah. a bit sus there. Yeah. And then don't be shy to call references. Yeah. Okay. Like get references from them, past employers, yeah. reference check with a character. Like find maybe, out what they're good at. Yeah. yeah, find out what they're like. Uh, when you are meeting someone, on attitude is there anything that you look for or ask like anything else that you're kind of digging for for example another guy i spoke to last week he's big on what do you do outside of work so like do you play a sport do you have a hobby and mm. at what level have you achieved that because that oh, yeah, can well, always show like discipline and stickability yeah. as well do you have anything that you look for in that in that sense no it's like <laughs> at the end of the day though yeah. if you get a good vibe from someone and the references say yep this guy's a gun Look, I, one of my project managers, I took a bit of a, a punt on. Yeah. And he's the best ever. Nice. Like, there you go. Came from a carpentry background, never done project management before. <laughs> I was skeptical on like computer skills. Yeah. Like generally carpenters don't have much interaction with computers. No, you just want them to be great builders. Yeah, you just yeah. want them to be great chippies, understand the plans, yeah. forward thinking, forward planning. Yeah know the inside and out of the thing, yeah, of, of sure. the build. And then you put them into an office and say, yeah. hey, mm. we need to do A, B, C, D. Yeah. Like, so I took a bit of a plunge with him and fortunately like disciplined, self-taught, Man. happy to use yeah. the software that we provide him. Sweet. If it's something that he doesn't understand, he'll go and research it himself. Yeah, it's cool. Like, yeah. Couldn't have asked for a, a better nice. employee. Yeah. Kiwi as well. So Yeah, let's go. New Zealand <laughs> so, represent. Yeah, yeah. Has he freshly moved over or has he been here for a while? So he, he was a chef in Brisbane, Buzzy. moved to carpentry. Yeah. And then stayed in Brizzy, did carpentry, and nice. then moved down to, to Melbourne. Melbourne. It's just beautiful here, man. Slate. Yeah. yeah. I, I just think there's so much more going on. Like our industry is busy, but when you talk, I mean, talk to guys like yourself, I mean, there seems to be ample amounts of work. Like, yeah. Yeah. What's your pipeline like at the moment for, for Yeah, pipeline? so lo- if you had spoken to me last June, July, <laughs> I would have been like, Stressing? Shit. I was stressing, like nothing was coming in through the door. And you still had 12 guys? Still had everyone. All that pay like, rolls. Like I had, I had enough work to see me out through the year. Yeah. But I didn't have anything to be able to jump on like yeah. day dot. Well, when I feel like when you're when you're at your in era, yeah. you get a job, you know, get an inquiry from the architect. It's six months before you sign something oh, up. Yeah, minimum, absolutely. Minimum. Yeah, minimum. So yeah. it's like fuck. If you're six months out, you're like, oh shit. Yeah. Man. So June, July, like no inquiries. I'm talking to architects. <laughs> Some architects were shutting up shop. Like wow. They had no work coming in. Um, you had all these different factors that were hitting the market. Builders were going under. Interest mm. rates were going up. Everyone was still concerned about yeah. material delays. Yeah. You had all the whispers that tradies were charging through the roof. <laughs> so it lost all confidence in the market. Yeah, yeah. Like June, July, August last year. Like yeah. And at that stage, I'm like... Jeez, what am I going? What am I going to do? Yeah, like, for sure. What do we do? Do and I start? And no business partner to lean on. It's kind no, of like so a lonely. I, yeah, so I got a brought in a CFO. Yeah. Said, how do I manage this? Like, yeah. where's my cash flow? Which month am I going to be out of money? Yeah, out of money. And um, how long did it take to find a CFO in construction? Oh, it was quick. He reached out to me on oh, LinkedIn really? and nice. And 
construction is his bread and butter. So cool. he doesn't worry about any other industry. Yeah. Um, so he sort of jumped in, worked with my bookkeeper. Nice. Is he with you full time or contract? No, he's contract. Okay. So cool. Sorry, I just you want pay to a retain. That. You pay a retainer each month, and then every fortnight he. We do a Zoom for an hour, Good see you. where the business is at, tells me where to transfer the funds into which account. Sweet. Um, says Steve, mate, if you don't get a job by the, then start bringing in money, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have trouble. Does that help reduce stress for you? No, <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> I was gonna say, man, yeah. I'm like, no, look, it's another mouth to kind of yeah. feed. Yeah. If they don't, re- you know, yeah. Yeah, like, because no one really wants to know the truth. No one really wants to know that you're losing X amount of money on a yeah. job. No one really wants to know that by February 2024. It's all over. It's, it's done. Like Yeah. Okay. What was the turning point? June, July, August last year. What was the... You I kid more... you not. November, December. Like people just woke up. Like yeah. I was getting two, three inquiries a week. Yeah. And maybe that's because of that other high-end builders started going belly up. Oh, like there was yeah. a, a lot of change in the market. Like there was two big builders that were high-end when, yeah. when belly up, closed their doors. Sure. And I think that just gave an opportunity to yeah. other builders in that market. Step into the space. Yeah. Step take into up the some space. free exactly projects. Exactly right. Yeah. And then I suppose also interest rates sort of, we're tape it off a bit. Tape it off a bit, put on hold. Um, but the first question I get asked when I meet a client is, how do I know you'll be there at the end of the job? Yeah, you're not going to go bust. Yeah, you're not going to go bust. And that's where the confidence in the market has yep. really dropped off. Okay. Um, how do you answer that question, by the way? Yeah, so basically, I got all those resources at the back end to be able to help me. Yeah. I have my CFO, I have a bookkeeper. Yeah. We're consciously checking for our forecasts and budgets every yeah. month. Yeah. Um, I have resources that can back me up. Okay, cool. So it's not like I'm running on $5,000 no, every month to be able to yeah. facilitate the job. Have you ever, sorry, this is the point I want to ask. Have you ever had a client ask for some sort of like proof stat of Statex. I have to sign Statex. On so, every project? Not every project. Some yeah. projects, um, clients want me to sign a stack deck every month to say that I've paid all the ah, stubbies for that okay. month. Yeah. I have no outstanding dues. Yeah, interesting. Sign the sign here. Yeah. And Does your accountant have to sign that as well, or just no? You? So I, just me. Okay, cool. At the end of the day, it's, you're the one making the payments. Yeah, I'm yeah, the director, sure. so yeah. everything falls on my head. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like I'm conscious that I won't go get. Six six million dollar jobs because I know that I can't cash flow that. Yeah, yeah. I know that I can't afford to take yeah. on those those type of jobs. Yeah. So if a job comes through the door and I see that it's going to be up of four million dollars, I'll politely decline and say yeah. I don't have capacity right now to to hit this to do to, to do that job. Do you find when you turn clients away, they're more inclined to go with you? No, not really. No, they're happy to. They're happy that I've ways. been honest with okay, them. Okay, cool. Yeah, and not lead them on. No, that's something that shows a lot of uh, yeah. integrity, though. Yeah, Usually absolutely. When you can turn a client away for an honest opinion, they're kind of like, "Well, shit! If builders are going bust, yeah, this guy's been honest. We might just wait until he's ready." Yeah. So a few projects have actually been put on hold because of that. To like, wait for you? No, wait or, for the market to uh, sort okay. of. Yeah. Take a breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sort of recatch, Come. recatch its momentum. Yeah. Before they do anything. Okay. Because cool. subbies are still hard to get. Yeah. And they're charging for it. A bomb. Yeah. So I'm seeing probably a thirty to forty percent increase. Yeah. Um, for subbies across. For subbies across the board. Yeah. Over the past, I'd say, eighteen months to two years. Do you, do you, when you put out tenders, do you get quotes or tenders back based on square meter rates or just job by job? Job by job. Job by job. Yeah. So some clients will come to me and say, or some architects will say, hey, Steve, we have this project coming up. Can you run some numbers on it? So I'll do a square meter rate 
based on previously tendered jobs or live yeah. jobs. Just to give them a just to give feel them an, for Yeah, yeah. So I'll say, I'll give them actually a trade breakdown. Nice. Like I'm not scared to give them a trade breakdown. Look, yeah. if I'm wrong, I'm wrong because yeah. of where the market is. Yeah, absolutely. So for example, we did a cost estimate for a job last year in Richmond. We're currently sent it out to the market. Mm. We've got it back and I'm within 10%. Nice. What's the rough square meter rate on a project like that? It's high because- 10,000? It's probably about seven. Okay. The reason why is because you're not getting your economies of scale of space. Yep. So everything's put in a tight area. Tight. So you get two bathrooms, a laundry, and a kitchen in mm-hmm. a house in Richmond. Yeah. It's going to be expensive yep. because you're not getting that square meter yep. of an open area. Absolutely, man. Yeah. So, yeah, whereas probably pre COVID, four and a half. Yeah, nice. People love seven. rates, man. It's a, it's a yeah, really like obsessive rates. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's just puts confidence in them and yeah. then it allows them to go to the bank, yeah. understand their borrowing capacity, see where, they're sitting. see where they're at, and then they'll say, all right, Steve, we're ready to go, or they'll go back to the architect, do some adjustments. Try to drop the price. Try, and sense. that's where that's where I prefer to do a negotiated tender rather than a, like a, um, a competitive tender. Cool work with the client and the yep. architect. From the get-go. From the get-go. To hit a budget. I yeah. find that's real important, eh? Because these clients will just go to an architect, get all this fancy shit drawn up, $5 million. Architect spending someone else's money. Yeah, and then they're, they're like, we've only got $2 million, not five. Yeah, Versus exactly. where I feel like if you can get a couple of cost proposals throughout the job, we're big yes. on concept estimates. Yes. Spend a small amount of money, go see an architect, get some concepts done. Yeah. Hey, this is sitting between two and three. Yes. I know it's a broad number, but at least it's like two and three, and then instead of spending what fifty thousand with an architect and doing all your submissions and council Correct. stuff, yeah, and then they're like, oh, we, we're two million short. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, what do we do? It's a huge number. And then it's very hard to find two million dollars. Yeah, exactly. It's like, easier to find a couple hundred grand. Yeah, right? exactly yeah. right. And so I suppose going back to tendering, yeah, a negotiated tender is better because then cool. we can work with the architect, work with the client instead of doing solid timber for your joinery yeah. that's go to a veneer. Yeah, for sure. Instead of using concrete subfloor, let's mm. look at a hebel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these Same are the process. things, yeah, that I don't know if it's an architect's too scared to go to the client and say, hey, mm. I've drawn this this house for you. They really like it. Yeah. We've put forward these materials. Mm. Now, what do, what do they do? Like, how, but, what yeah. do, how do they tell the client, like, yeah. shit, this is what it's actually going to cost? I feel like, um, and this is another, the architects do an amazing job, but I sometimes think they're more concerned about what their portfolio looks like than the actual job Couldn't going, agree more. like, what are they going to put on Instagram? You know? Yeah, and they're still getting paid yeah, for I know. all the documentation. <laughs> and then it's someone like you to come in and give yeah. the hard word and be like, nah, man, we've yeah. got to strip all these luxuries. Exactly, man. exactly right. Um, do you, I just want to know, so for example, I want to know your process. When a client comes to you to the inquiry, you give a ballpark figure. What's your step-by-step process to get them signed up to? Yeah, uh, pick, so. And elaborate as well, go into fixed price contract, cost plus stuff. Yeah, so inquiry will come through generally from a, um, an architect. They'll send us like the concept design. And they'll say, oh, are you interested in quoting the job? Cool. And then some of them will turn around and say, hey, can we get a cost estimate for it? Mm. Or we're going out to tender, are yep. you interested? We've got three other builders, so you're one of four. Uh, yeah. um, so I'll look at the drawings. Once again, we're making sure that it's a right fit for us. Yeah. Um, not too big, not mm. too small. Location is another thing. Like I'll, yeah, I'll try to stay within our, our region. Yeah. So then once it becomes a competitive tender, we'll given, we get given six weeks tender period, four okay. to six weeks, yep. anywhere between that. And then we'll do it, submit it. Generally speaking, it's about three weeks before you hear from the architect to say, hey, yeah. you, your price is either too high in the middle, down yep. low. And then basically what will happen is that They'll say, oh, you're too high. We're going to negotiate with another builder. Okay, cool. Or put the, go the other side. You're one of two. Yeah. We need, we, the client wants to see your work. Nice. Wants to talk to some references. Sweet. And then you know, geez, you're, you're, we're, you're, on. You, you're on, we're on. 
Um, and then basically that can be another month. Yeah. So that's already two months gone. Yeah, it's a long process. Long process. And then in the back of your mind, like, oh, the sub is going to hold that price. Because remember, you've quoted <laughs> that now already two months ago. Yeah. Generally, quotes are only valid for 30 days. And then... Yeah, man. So you're trying to speed up the process. Clients are trying to make the best decision for them. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's, it's constant. Like, it's a pressure cooker, man. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, for example, now we, we quoted a job, met with the clients. They said, yeah, you've got the job, but we need to strip back 100,000 bucks. Oh, man. So then you're going through it all again. Yeah. Like, where yeah. can we find 100,000? The architect's very reluctant to change the design. Yeah. So then it's left to us of what materials or building mm. um, processes we can put in place to be able to get that yeah. price down. For sure. So when you get to that space, uh, yeah. we'll hold where you are because I still want to go through that. Yeah. Um, is that just a case of, okay, cool, 100 grand, you'll go back to your estimator, have a Zoom with him, hey man, we need to find 100 grand. Do you kind no, of- No, so I go to the architect and say, hey, back to the you architect. need to provide us cost savings. Okay, like, because cool. I can strip it out, Yeah, yeah. but at the same time, design's out of my jurisdiction. Yeah, like, sweet. I don't know what the the design that the client I'm not involved in the brief the design yeah, yeah. brief I don't know what the client wants uh, interesting so, so you just put that back on the architect I put that back on the architect Fair I'm like play, man. you tell me what you want to strip out what you want to change I'll tell you yeah. the cost savings if you Buzzy. find a substitute yeah and do, do the, are the architects open to working with you on that? Oh, absolutely. Because they've already been paid. So they're no, but like, they, they want that job to come to, fruition. to go live. They okay. want that job to go live. Okay, cool. Because once again, want more for their portfolio. Yep. If they're administering the job, they get a percentage of the fees for the duration of that project. True. Yep. So it's in their best interest make it work for to everyone. make it work for everyone. Cool, man. Um, so then typically speaking, we sign a fixed price contract. Sweet. Um, Have you always done fixed price? Always done like, fixed price. Never done anything on cost plus? I try not to. to Some areas you might cost plus. In uh, a look, project. if I don't know the price, we leave it as provisional sum or a prime cost. Yeah, if I nice, don't know nice. the price of that particular item, I'll do it as a prime cost allowance. Yeah. If I don't know the scope of that works, I'll leave it yep. as a provisional sum. Okay. Cool. So that, there's still money in there. Nice. Should shit hit the fan. Yeah. There's still a little retainer in there. Okay, cool. Cost plus, a lot of admin. The so client can much. turn around to you and say, hey, I didn't want to spend that much. Yeah. Or you have to go get three quotes on the fly. I know. You're trying to get momentum on site. You then have to pause it because you don't have the right price. Yeah. People think you save money like with cost plus, but yeah. the amount of extra time you're billing from the office to sort oh, out, it's almost it's, not worth it. It's eh? not worth it. No. Nah. And to be honest, Subbies are not going to price a job in three days. No. Nah. They're going to want at least two weeks. In your space, for yeah, sure. Yeah, like, so it's impossible to do a cost plus. Yeah. Yes, don't get me wrong, some other builders are doing cost plus, mm. but I know the price of a fixed price contract. I know the budgets that I have to attain. It's straightforward. Yeah. I don't have to worry about presenting an invoice to a client and then start getting the questioned us. and I have to justify it. And then I... A, a subby then prices a job and then has a variation on that. Like, yeah, yeah, it's too confusing. It's very difficult. Yeah. Like, you got that price. Now you're putting in a variation. Yeah. Whereas if it's a fixed price contract, unforeseen, you can put in a variation. Mm. And the client and architect understand that, yeah. that yes, variations do, do arise. For sure. Particularly in the renovation space. Yeah. New builds, it's a m little bit harder to put a variation in. Yeah, it's all stock standard. Really. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. feel like once you're out of the ground, there's no leniency to no, there's make not, changes. Unless you know? it's client or architect driven. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, nah, that's that's cool. Um, okay, cool. So you you'll get a you'll get a fixed price contract from from those clients. And then have you ever had like clients bite back at changes? Have you ever had a project that hasn't gone well? Have you lost money on a project? I want to get into some problems. Yeah, so... People love problems. If every if, if any builder tells you that they're not losing money or yeah, they don't yeah, have yeah. problems on site, they're liars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Give me some... I lose problems. money on every job. I'm yeah. I'm going to lie. I yeah. mean, it's always going into the bottom line. So yeah. you always want to go into a job with 15 to 20% margin. Yeah. Um, at the time when I really desperate to get jobs, mm. I was 
anywhere between your 12 and 15 percent yeah cool. it's going in really lean trying to get mm. that job at the end of the day I lose job. I lose money on every job. Yeah, it's just mitigating how much you're losing. How much you're losing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the reason why we're losing money is mistakes yeah. on site. Things From a like, labor labor perspective, like your yeah, guys labor, or, yeah, yeah, labor. Um, and then when a subby says, "Oh, the plans weren't really clear, but they didn't make any allowance in their quote," and then they come back to you and say, "Hey." I really didn't allow for the box gutter to fall this way. Yeah. It's going to cost another 1200 bucks to redirect it. Like, oh, man. I can't go back to the client and say, hey, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the plumber didn't allow for the box gutter to run the way that it needs to be to feed the tank. Yeah, they'll be like, and this guy's building our $5 million Yeah, house. exactly. Not so, happy, yeah. that's 1200 bucks. Yeah, absolutely. And then, Do that 10 or 15 times. Yeah, it's 12, yeah. 15 grand. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Yeah. And, during the time of COVID, you've priced the job, it's fixed price. You can only have five people on site at any one time. Mm. Subbies walking off the job Fuck, because yeah. they couldn't get vaccinated. Yeah. Re, re-letting that contract on a, on a price that you got quoted eight months ago. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's tough, man. Yeah. And then, and also defects like. Defects cost money to fix. Yeah, absolutely. The time getting the painter back, the painter refusing to come back to do it. So then you have to get another painter in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've already paid him. <laughs> I'm really bad on retention because subbies don't want to work on retention anymore. Yeah, they just so want to get paid. They just want to get paid. Uh. And you want to try to keep that good relationship with that tradie because... Yeah. Getting someone else, you don't know their quality of work. It's you risky th- and it's hard. It's, yeah, but so, you've got to protect your bank account too. Like <laughs> I know. So yeah, every job I lose. Yeah. Um, two Just, jobs in particular. Um, one over in Fitzroy, which was a terrace. Yeah. Just got caught in COVID material yeah. costs. That just stuffed me up and yeah the time that it took to do the job just yeah. screwed me over that's horrible and then you get hit with liquidated damages so not only you're losing money on yeah the actual cost of the items cost of the, the build yeah you're losing money days liquidated damages. weeks yeah. months yeah. yeah how much a day were we talking on that one so that one we're at 1200 a, a week oh man so six grand four four eight a month yeah so i went over there three months yeah it's 15 grand. Uh, 15 grand gone again. So that money, comes man. out of your retention. Yeah. So put 15 plus the other 30 you lost, that's already 45 grand. Yeah. Whereas on, on, that was only a million dollar job. Yeah. Margin the margin's time. only 15%. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. That's, that's like 30% so, of your profit gone. Just yep, like that. Exactly right. I suppose that's the game. That's the risk you're playing with high end risk. Yeah, right? exactly. And then um, another big job that we're, it's a, it was a new build, our first new build. Once again, quoted it in light gauge steel because we couldn't get timber at the time. Uh, so then we went, reverted back to timber, got that prefabbed. Obviously yeah. the timber was a little bit more expensive Yeah. because we didn't want to go um, metal studs because we're not used to metal studs. Nah, and you're, that would I had carpenters, I couldn't get my carpenters with the metal studs. so. Yeah, it's a lot of... What do I do? So on every job, there's always something. (laughs) There's always a headache. What would you do if you didn't want to build? (laughs) I've often thought about that. I was going to say, man. I've often thought about that. Yeah. Um, I honestly, I haven't even... Thought about it. Thought about really what I'd do, what I could do. Yeah, you get stuck in the game. You you get stuck in the building game and like it's hard to get out of. Yeah, man. Like I've always thought about just maybe packing up and going working for another builder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and making it someone else's problem. Yeah. But at the same time, when you're your own boss, you have your own team, like you wake up in the morning, I'm like, I love what I love. I really love what I do. I love yeah, man. going to the office, Yeah. speaking to the guys on site, yeah. seeing the jobs come to completion. That's cool, man. Clients walk in. Like I did this job, took over from another builder and like when we finished the job, the daughter yeah. came and wrapped her arms around me and said, thank you. Because I never thought that the job would actually be finished. Yeah, that's quite a cool feeling. Yeah, right? it's like yeah. It's such an awesome feeling. But then you have some other jobs where the architects and the clients are involved. They're like, 
Yeah. Fuck, you've delayed the job. Yeah. You've come through all this. They just so the highs and lows are yeah, pretty yeah. drastic, eh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then put that in the mix of losing all the money. Yeah. It's 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 tough a hard, it's a tough game. It is tough, man. Um, I'm all good for my stuff. I can keep going. If you yeah. want to dabble on any notes, so it's on your end, and we can cut this out. If you've got anything you want to, otherwise we can. I think we'll be all. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. If, if you've got anything else. Um, yeah, man. No, um, I mean, you covered pretty much everything. No, nah, that's cool, bro. I've got yeah. a couple more things. Brennan will cut this out, so that's fine. Yeah, beautiful. Um, what do you see? What, what's your main thing you see happening in the market for Melbourne for the next 12 to 24 months? Oh, I reckon it'll be, it'll be flourishing soon. Yeah. yeah. Because interest rates are on hold. Yeah. RBA sort of cut that. I think. Yeah. I, th- I, th- I think that. Um, people always need to renovate. Yeah, it's man. like people always need a haircut. Yeah, changing with the times. Yeah, they'll have to change always... with the mind. Yes, they may have had a million dollar budget back mm. then. They may only now have eight hundred thousand dollar budget. Yeah, they may do a portion of the house and then yeah. leave the pool maybe for a later. For date. later, yeah, exactly. Or they may leave a bathroom out. Mm. Like this one job that I'm doing in in Middle Park at the moment, really tight budget. I went through an architect. Yeah. I'm still desperate on work, like <laughs> trying to fill the spaces. Yeah, get those six months um, blocks. Yeah, like they were, they wanted to go straight away. Yeah. It was only a 300K job. Yeah. And um, they deleted a shower, yeah. saved about six grand, and that's all they needed to get yeah. over the line. Yeah. Sign a contract Easy. starting the end of the Feb. Done. Lock um, it in. Lock it in. That's 275 grand. Yeah. Making 20% margin on that. It's good money, eh? Three months, I should be in and out. Yeah, nice. Um, so you think things, you can turn things around pretty quickly, just getting on the phone, landing a few jobs yeah, can change. Yeah, like people ask me, like, what's my capacity like? I can always make a plan Yeah. in resources. Yeah. The only thing that always holds me back is cash flow. Yeah, that's the hardest thing. Hardest thing. Like, 